Hello, uh, good evening from here in India. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Shamu Proto Rai. I just finished my master's in English literature from the English and Foreign Languages University. And I just started out my PhD journey from IIT Jodhpur. Uh, so the project that I'll be talking about today is basically considering my master's thesis and how I plan to, how I plan also and what I did to kind of elaborately expand it and as much as possible within the circumstances. So uh, solo Indian electronic literature, intentional minimality and community building. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say how grateful I am to Fiski for giving me this opportunity and how sorry I am that I missed the actual time that the time zone gremlins are at it again. Uh, so yeah, let's go. Now, the first question that I'd like to clarify here is why solo? What, what is the need or what is the importance of this particular term, solo? Um, this is particularly interesting because it goes back to my own journey. And here comes the next slide. Is that in 2015, when I started writing in my own blog, and the links are here in the screen, um, what I noticed was that it is a lot of work to make and upload or share a work which not only has text, but perhaps a little bit more than that, a little bit of more media than that. And later on, much later on in 2021 or later 2020, when I got acquainted with the dynamics of electronic literature as a discipline, as a field, academically speaking, I saw that most of the works or many of the acclaimed works required a lot of infrastructural handling, a lot of collaborative effort, which should be the case. But because of its rhizomatic presence in India, I should, not only is rhizomatic, but also scattered and fewer far between. I did not see many infrastructural support or people trying to fetch infrastructural support to create works of this nature. Therefore, the question of exploring the idea of literature being solo popped into my mind because I wanted to see that in a country that has a considerable amount of digital divide, I wanted to see how much could people create when they are alone. If I have a fair idea that what are people capable of doing by themselves, that will give us some kind of a benchmark to proceed thereon. Any kind of generalizing within approximately 130 million people is, well, is, is anything but a concrete outcome, but there has to be some start regardless. So that's how it started out for me. And then in 2021, before the Electronic Literature Organization Conference, I was privileged to create or curate, I would say create because it is open source really, anyone can come and edit. Um, an Indian electronic literature research collection at ELMSIP, the Electronic Literature Knowledge Base, which is hosted out of, I believe it's hosted out of Bergen in Norway. What I did was basically, I tried to collect certain materials related to Indian electronic literature, be it academic or creative, and I tried to make a collection out of it. So if you follow the link given in the screen, and I will provide it otherwise as well, it will give you an idea as to what the existence of it is and why I'm calling it an intentional minimality, which is why I proceed to the next slide. Now, this is basically my thesis results. Why minimal? What is the need to be minimal? Yeah. So I would look at two aspects, gender and intentionality. Then comes platform and print. Now, in my thesis, I ran a survey and I couldn't really run a big survey because, well, frankly speaking, I did not have the time or during COVID, I did not have the resources to do so. 
So I did as much as I could. And uh, I ran a survey for a month from 15th of March to the 15th of April, so that the, the data set becomes a little symmetric, because I can see that I ran the survey for like a month. And I got 89 text-based interview responses, which is a lot of data. This is almost 25 descriptive questions. So yeah, you can imagine that that's a lot of data to kind of quantify. So I asked this question that, why do you write online? What's the need to write online? Because I wanted to not only look at what they are doing, online, but also why they are doing online. And the people who identified themselves as male in my survey, 87% of them say that it is because of a feel good thing and to create a community. It's only some about 6% talk about self-improvement and another 6% talk about beating boredom, to be very honest. Things get a little bit more interesting when we look at the results of people who identified themselves as females. 51% of them are interested in community development, yeah, and community creation, yes. 30% of them are interested in some sense of catharsis. That yes, it is also about feel good and creating a sense of not having all them, but I believe it goes a little beyond than that. What is most interesting is the last 18% of the data, which talks about a sense of emancipation. Now, this is highly interesting for me because in what I have seen, what I have seen in India, because I cannot, cannot really take a game for my country either, The presence of people on the internet is still confined to young people, comparatively speaking. And therefore, I believe personally that in order to escape the societal patriarchal heteronormative case, the online is seen as a site of expression, emancipation, and escape. And that is why the notion of intentionality comes into the picture. Now, this was the first part of my argument that it is a gender thing and the intentionality matters. It doesn't only matter what people are producing because, well, it might sound like you can do it as easily in a piece of paper. Why do you need to be online? That is what I wanted to explore. Why are you choosing the said mode? Then comes the issue of platform and the idea of print. Now, why would you choose a platform? Most people say, once again, about convenience and community. Some people also say, you know, that it suits their expression, it has metadata. You can see the data is on the screen. And if you can't, please reach out to me. I'll be happy to discuss it with you even further. Because it's a lot of data. And if I go over it, it'll take a lot of unnecessary time to be honest. So the chunk of the data is about convenience and community because they choose a platform because it is easy, because there are people and they can share their work and that's it. The reason is as simple as that. The next question is then, if you are choosing a platform, why aren't you choosing the conventional mode of print? The best example, the best respondents say it is because it, you can incorporate media or have a link, and because it is very important that the web, to some extent, is free, whereas getting your writing out in the open in print is costly because you need to publish it somewhere, then it might involve finances. It is interactive, people can interact with it. And there is a sense of informality. And many people also have said that that might lead to it being pulp in nature. And that there can also be an archive of your work. Really. So this is what it boils down to. 
the intention of choosing the mode. I'll proceed to the next one. Once I had my data, when I was doing my survey, I just did not focus on creating a data set. I also wanted to build a community of people in and around electronic literature. And in order to create a community, I took help of two other communities, academic communities in India. And they were extremely important for me to come up with this eventually. The most important was these two organizations, Dharti, which is the Digital Humanities Alliance for Research and Teaching Innovations, and DIGRA, the Digital Games Research Alliance India, which was earlier called Game Studies India. I'm particularly grateful to two people, Dr. Shovik Mukherjee and Dr. Dibodhuti Roy, both of whom are associated in different levels with both of the institutions, I'm sorry, organizations. So I'm very grateful because I could use the community to build another community, which is EAI or Electronic Literature India. The socials are given here and I can provide it to you other than that as well. So that's how we gathered the presence and we amplified, but the challenge does not end here. It is not only about building a community, but also about building awareness. Because people in this group, and we use WhatsApp, that's why I used the logo of WhatsApp in the earlier slide, that it is necessary to bring a group of people, especially in the context of India, because people are not aware of the potentiality of it in an academic sense of the word. So it's not only about amplification or gathering people. It's also about the presence of people and presence of what we are talking about. That is in the literature. And last but not the least, it's about possibilities. When India was going through a very dire time during coronavirus, the second wave, we used this platform to bring people together and for sharing corona resources. A hospital bed, an oxygen cylinder, we were doing that. Therefore, a need for the community, a need for a space, exceeds the boundary of academic engagement, falls into the domain of the human, of the basic needs, especially when we are going through one of the most difficult phases in the history of mankind. Thank you so much once again, Fiski, for giving me this opportunity, especially Dr. Barbara Bordelejo, who introduced me and gave me the opportunity to be here and who has been an amazing mentor for me. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>